Good afternoon, everybody. Dan Lopez here for episode number five of L Lunch with Local Legends. I'm here with a very special guest, Toby Moyle. Life is a Ladder Incorporated. How are you doing today, Toby? Great. Thanks for having me, Dan. Thank you for coming. Really very much appreciate it. Uh, you enjoying the cooler weather today? I am, yes. I like it a little bit cooler, for sure. I get to break out. Us women know we get to break out our uh, fall and winter attire, so we get to wear the sweaters for a little while. Fantastic. Well, I'm <laughs> sure a lot of my realtor friends out there are, are very familiar with who you are already. You've been very much involved with the uh, with the uh, Realtor Association for, for several, several years. Yeah. And uh, But you're kind of on to a new endeavor here. You want to tell me about it? I am. So... As you said, I've spent the last 20 years in the finance industry, but worked very closely with the real estate industry, of course. Um, I know that you're on the board at the Orlando Regional Realtor Association, and I sat on the board as a director. You know, it's terrible. I'm terrible with dates. It must have been back in, I think it was 2007 and 2008, possibly, wow. right around then, so about a good 10 years ago, uh, which was an honor to, to sit on that board. So worked very closely with real estate agents for quite a long time. And it's been about, gosh, it's only been maybe seven months or so that I left my corporate job. My last role was as the uh, area manager for Georgia and Florida for J.P. Morgan Chase. Mm -hmm. And I left that role to, to start my own coaching and speaking firm I'm doing now. And so I really wanted to basically, what I've done for the last 20 years, helping sales professionals and sales leaders to achieve you know, the level of success, inside of companies. Now I'm going out to do that with the world uh, at large, if you will. And so I'm out there just trying to let everybody know that I can now help them as either an individual coach or go to speak to companies, sales organizations, and give seminars and workshops and classes, which I really, really enjoy doing. That's outstanding. Yeah. Just wanted to give a quick welcome to uh, Michael Carr and, and uh, Mike Costa, so was that Rika Properties and, and Chad. Hey. Thank you very much. Uh, my wife Tina has joined us. Thank you so much. And um, yeah, so okay, so you, you're you're now working as a coach and public speaker. I think you just had an event recently, right? Yeah, we did an event yesterday with um, with Namba, who I'm honored to be the Orlando chapter president of. And Namba is the National Association of Minority Mortgage Bankers of America. It's a mouthful, I like to say. It's a lot of <laughs> well, it's a large acronym. Uh, but I sit as chapter president, and that is a great association that empowers and minorities in the real estate finance industry, but also in the real estate industry. So everyone, all of our real estate agent friends and mortgage friends and title friends, uh, anyone, like they said, in the real estate industry that's interested in getting involved in that nonprofit association, it's a, we have great tools there uh, to help everyone to achieve, whether you're, like I said, a salesperson or uh, on the leadership side, we have a leadership academy that we just started. So a lot of great things. It's a national association, and then we have a local chapter here um, that, that I'm involved with. Well, wonderful. So. so how did the event go? Was it It was great. Success? It was great. You know, I, like I said, I love, certainly love one-on-one -on -one interactions and love mm -hmm. to sit down face-to-face -face with someone, but um, I really enjoy the opportunity to speak to a large group because there's always someone that something, hopefully, that I say, uh, share resonates with someone in the audience. So mm -hmm. I think the larger the group, the, the higher odds of that happening, you know, and so, right, right. Um, and since I only started this company, the solopreneur company of uh, several months ago, every opportunity is an opportunity to to learn and to grow and to change and see what works and what what landed well with people and what didn't. And mm -hmm. so I really love that kind of self exploration part of the business. Okay. So um so I'm my own worst critic and I go back and I like, you know, I make sure I always record everything I do to make sure I go back and say that worked well, that didn't, I change that next time, that kind of thing. So um, so it's always a good learning opportunity, I guess I would say, but I appreciate everyone who came out uh, yesterday for sure. So are you teaching many of the same skills that you picked up in corporate America or? That's a great question. And yes, absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, I find um, there's a lot of pros and cons about working for big companies. Mm -hmm. I could give you a list on both sides uh, for <laughs> sure after 20 years, <laughs> um, but there's a lot of great things. And exactly what you said. You hit the nail on the head. There's a lot of structure, a lot of um, tools that a large company provides to you. Yeah. And so uh, classes even and, and coaching and mentorship. And so I've, I've really taken all those tools and now, you know, brought them with me, things that worked, obviously. And now I share those with a lot of people that um, maybe don't have that in their company, or maybe they do, and they just want to have an extra person. I like to say it's always nice to have kind of an 
expert from the outside mm -hmm. to look at your business a little objectively and you know share what their thoughts are. It's hard, I think, as humans, salespeople are not, uh, sometimes we're not really great on um, self evaluating, right? And so right. I think having a coach, having someone that, like I said, is just on the outside looking in, it's a it's a real value to have that. So. Uh, but yeah, I use the tools and then just what I've learned over 20 years working with a lot of top salespeople, um, having the pleasure of, of leading a lot of top sales leaders. I've you know been able to see what, what they do that works and then what doesn't work. There's as much value in knowing, hey, don't waste your time on that. Or, you know, this right. might look good on paper, but it's not going to you know serve you well. Interesting. Kind of okay. <laughs> just want to uh, say a quick hello to Stephen Placey and, and looks like Mike McGraw yeah, has joined us and Kevin Boudreau. How you doing, buddy? Let's say thanks thanks for joining us. And okay, so um, tell me, what's your ideal customer then? Who are you, who are you looking to? Uh, yeah, that's to a great with? question. So, <clears throat> so right now, I'm currently working with a lot of my real estate agent friends when mm -hmm. it comes to one on one coaching. So mm -hmm. a lot of real estate agents, a lot of loan officers, and then sales leaders on both the real estate and the mortgage side. Um, leadership is really my forte and probably my strongest suit, my best and high use to be honest honest would be working with leaders mm -hmm. on how to how to best build the culture in their team how to build a great recruiting plan you know personal development leadership plan um, but really any anybody who wants to take their business to the next level we were talking right before uh, we went live I said I work with a lot of people in the real estate industry but I can really help anybody that's that is in a small business or that owns a business, right? Anybody in sales, because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, personal development impacts and, and helps everyone. So my client list, my ideal client would be anyone that wants to take their business to the next level. Okay. Well, then I got to ask the next question. Then how do you go out and find these? That's customers? a great question. Yeah, because as we we both would agree, you can't boil the ocean, right? You can't just like <laughs> say you're everything to everyone. So. Well, I'm starting with my circle, which is I what I advise my the, my clientele and when I my coaching clients, mm -hmm. which is have a niche or have a demographic that you really focus on that you're an expert in. And so, since my last 20 years has been spent in the real estate industry, I'm starting right. there. And I think organically, naturally, as time goes on, I've already seen that in the short time, people will know someone else. Hey, can you help my friend who's opening a, a new business that's a chiropractor that wants to know how to get new clients, right? So it's kind of organically taking form. Mm -hmm. And I just have to be patient, which is a virtue, right? So, uh, yeah. Okay, so, so I'm, I'm, a, I'm a business owner and I reach out to you and I say, Toby, um, you know, I'm interested in growing my company. I want to expand. Um, I, I guess I give you the guidelines on, on how I wish to go about doing that, whether yeah. it's increasing the number of agents or increasing the number of sales, both, whatever the case may be. Exactly. Uh, what is it that you're going to, I guess, tell me uh, in order to, well, basically um, um, achieve the goal, or well, not just even achieving the goal, just just convince me to to sign up for for a service. Like That's yours. a great question. So it depends on how much you really want to invest in yourself, how much you really want the, to reach that goal. Is what mm -hmm. I would tell you. Mm -hmm. So developed plans. You know, I've I've always been a firm believer in having a coach or having a mentor, or having someone like I said earlier that's really you know, on your team, that, that partner in your success. And I wanted to develop many different levels of plans. And Stephen, I saw is on. Stephen's been helping me tremendously um, with trying to make a varied amount of different plans that you can invest in because understanding it, especially if someone's in a position, maybe where they are starting off, they, they need help too, right? Especially. Um, so we have some different different monetary plans. It goes for ranges from doing individual coaching. If you wanted something where I'm going to hold, you have accountability calls you say every week, something as intense as that, mm -hmm. all the way down to webinars where we're going to do launching here very soon some live webinars while I'll be coming on little classes and people still have interaction, ask questions. Uh, so it just depends, like I said, on where you're at financially and then time wise, of course, as well. So I just someone before. Um, I came into your office and she told me that she has four kids. She doesn't have a ton of time and she lives about an hour from physically from where I'm at. So I'm like, listen, we can meet over Zoom, you know, or some of the great tools that our, our technology affords us. Right, right. And uh, so I said, we could still work it into her schedule for sure. Um, but yeah, so we have different options. Let's put it that way. So it really just comes down to a one on one conversation and to see where they're at in their business okay. as well. Um, yeah. Very cool. All right. Well, I want to give a quick shout out to Doug Kemp, uh, Debbie Brogover Blaze, and, um, and it looks like Lisa, Lisa Cather joined us yeah, as well. Yeah, a lot of good friends out uh, there. Hey, Richard guys. Henry, how you doing? 
So yeah, thank, thanks very much for joining. Awesome. All right, so what, what makes your coaching then unique uh, in comparing it to other Yeah, that's a good question. Or... And I think there's a lot of great coaching programs out there. Don't get me wrong. I think that for me, it's, the, it's my experience, number one, because okay. um, I've walked the walk, right? So I've done this for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And then you get me when you're doing the coaching. So I don't have a coaching firm where I um, have like 20 questions that I hire someone to go over and checklist. You know, how did you do, Dan? Did you make your 20 calls this week? It's not robotic. It's very personal. Mm -hmm. My passion in life, literally, my, my passion in life is to help other people achieve what they want to achieve. It's what, it. It, yeah, right. it's what floats my boat. It always was in any role that I had. And so um, for me, if I won the lottery tomorrow, I would still do what I do. I just, I really care about people. I enjoy people. I like getting to know people. Um, and so it's just, it's for me, probably that's, I would say what sets it apart is the personal, you know, the personal touch. Okay. I, I call myself your, your secret weapon, if you will. I wanna be that, you know, silent partner uh, on someone's team and I encourage people to, I guess that would be another thing. I'm really big on, as adults, I don't think we encourage each other enough. And I know we've talked and you've always been a, a great encourager of me. And um, it's funny, a lot of people don't do that to each other, just in business. I don't know, it um, comes from a mindset, I think, from a lot of people if they're so worried about themselves, they don't reach out and really support each other. Mm -hmm. Even like you doing this show, it's fantastic. I'm, I love it. Okay. Um, and, uh, I think, you know, when I'm coaching people, uh, hopefully I'm there to be that, that, you know, little voice on their shoulder that's telling them that they can do it and they should try it and encouraging them, you know, to, okay. to try different things and go for it. it goes a long way. You know, we all need that a little extra push, I think. So what made you take this leap then? I mean, it, you know, I, I'm, well, I'm going to start with this. How long have you have been wanting to kind of take this leap and, and then what? finally made you decide to do it? Yeah, that's a great question. I've been thinking about it for a very long time. Because mm -hmm. um, like I said, I was help doing the same side of, side of coaching or type of coaching inside of the company. And there is a gap. There, there's there's um, some open areas, I would say, in the whole coaching. And then I love to do, like I said, seminars. I dare say call it motivational speaking, because yep. I think that can sound a little almost too esoteric or too out there. But I, so I say I kind of do motivational sales seminars. Um, <laughs> so there, there's always a tinge to sales and having a, getting a return on your investment. But the motivational speaking business, inspirational, personal development speaking business, there's not a lot of females out there doing that. There are some, there's Mel Robbins and Joyce Meyer, and there's some great female speakers, Love but Joyce there's not, Meyer. yeah, she's great. <laughs> uh, but there's not as many. And so I think, um, certainly I don't speak the women, but I mm -hmm. think that there's there's a value in having males and females. And you know, you've always had even, you know, Napoleon Hill and Dale Carnegie and Jim Rohn and Tony Robbins and Grant Cardone. You have the newer kind of you know version of, of motivational speakers. Mm -hmm. And there's not a lot. There's not as many women in that whole field. And so, interesting. Don't get me wrong, uh, world out there. I'm not saying that I'm, uh, you know, Tony Robbins or Dale Carnegie, but but I certainly think that that's kind of in the vein of of what I'm what I'm trying to emulate is those 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 guys that you know were classy and that mm -hmm. wanted to uh, wanted to help others so outstanding all right now so I wanted to ask you a question if you don't mind sure go ahead so um, <laughs> I I mentioned today to Dan when when uh, we talked about doing the show I said um, or asked him if he wouldn't mind if I ask him a few questions because let me brag on Dan so many of you I'm sure know Dan very well um, and I've had the pleasure of knowing Dan and Tina for many years now. It's been a long time. Yeah, we really quick. went back. Yes. Yeah, I know. It's been a while. <laughs> um, and so I asked Dan, I said, I would love to come on your show, but I would love to also ask you a few questions because you are such a wealth of knowledge and such a stand-up great guy and such a great leader. You Lots guys of have laughs a, going on. I mean, it's, a, it's true. <laughs> and I, I know all of your, all of your friends and um, compatriots agree. So I wanted to ask you a few questions because I do love to, uh, I know some things about you I'd love to know and I'm sure the audience would love to know as well if you wouldn't let me uh, mind picking your brain for a couple questions. Well, like I told you sure. earlier on, I'm much better at asking questions than answering them, but uh, go right ahead. Uh, <laughs> all right, good. So if you wouldn't mind, you asked me about what um, 
you know, caused me or was the impetus for me to finally make the change to go out and do my own business. Mm -hmm. So uh, could I ask you the same? So you obviously have your own firm here in Legends Realty here in Lake Mary, mm -hmm. um, but you were with a large firm before. We were, yeah. So what was the impetus or what caused you to go off and, and do your own true own company? Hmm. That, that is a good question. I guess it's always been a goal of mine. Uh, when I first got into the real estate business back in 2000, um, from day one, I knew I, eventually I wanted to open up my brokerage. And I guess I had, um, I was bold enough to, to think that it could be a five year plan. I thought I got my broker's license and after the first year, which is all you needed, now you have to wait two years. Uh, but then I was thinking, okay, I'll, I'll focus on education. I'll make myself the best possible realtor I can be, save up a boatload of money. and then. <laughs> Be able to open up it, the company. Right? Yep. But then uh, I was fortunate enough to, to uh, work under a really, really great uh, broker and friend in the business, and we became very comfortable. Uh, his name is Stephen Baker uh, with Remax, and yeah, um, I'm still very great friends with him. And um, so we became comfortable, very comfortable, and, um, and kind of putting that on the back shelf. And then uh, one day the, the timing was right. It had to do with um, you know office changing locations and, and that type of thing. And and uh, Tina and I spoke, and we were like, okay, well, let's go ahead and um, let's make the plunge. And wow. um, uh, we were fortunate enough that uh, we focused on two different areas of real estate. I focus on the sales side. She mm -hmm. focuses on the property management side. So when one starts to slow down, the other one usually picks right up. Sure. And, and you know, yep. uh, we very rarely have a downtime because of it. Um, also because of that, we were able, we have a baseline income that's always in place. Yeah. And as long as that stayed relatively the same, then we, we realized we should be able to open up our, our, our own company. Expenses would be pretty similar and we should be able to, to make a go of it. And well, the rest was history. It worked yeah. out pretty well. Good for you. Good we, for were, you. we kept our 100% of our client um, base and, and the only thing that changed was the name of the company and uh, our yeah, phone nice. number stayed the same. I, um, uh, website stayed the same. Just, That's great. You uh, really prepared, right? We did. Which is, yes. Yeah, I think. Um, but even when that you happens, know, you know, you can't you can't prepare for you everything. Yeah. Uh, we had issues with our phone system when we had to to port over the the phone number from the previous company to ours, and all of a sudden it was like a thirty day process with these errors that you know, all yeah. of a sudden it wasn't porting over properly. Yeah, and a bunch of other crap that comes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can't like you said, the best laid plans of mice and men, right? right. Things definitely yeah. happen. Um, so I so you've been in the business a long time, and and Dan's run a really successful business, like you said, still does. I mean, it's just uh, really been fun to watch you over the years. You know you're doing really well. When I mentioned to a, a few people yesterday that I was going to be on um, your show today, and a couple people that I told, every single person was like, oh, I know Dan. One person said, I've never met Dan, but I've heard of Dan over the years. He seems like such a great guy. So everyone always just has this glowing things to say about you and Tina, which oh, is great. great. That's nice to hear. Um, so I coach a lot of top producers, and I coach a lot of people that just got into the sales business. So oftentimes, be a um, owner, broker owner, or a sales leader at a finance company will hire me to come in and say, you know what, I'm going to pay you to coach these five people or these 10 people or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes, like I said, I'm working with brand new people. So a really great question I'd love to ask you is what is something that you know now, I'm sure there's a lot of things that you know now that you wish you would have known when you first got into the real estate industry? Oh, okay, well, that is a good question. Uh, if I was able to do it all over again, I probably would work uh, under a successful sales mm. person first, uh, learn as much as I can before before going out on my own. I was fortunate enough, I had my first uh, closing um, Within 45 days of, of uh, my license going active, which which beats the norm. Yeah, um, not bragging. It just sort of worked out that way. Um, but you, you attribute that to to showing up and being prepared and, and learning as much as you can and, and yeah. just being ready to go when the opportunity presents itself. And and uh, for, fortunately, I was, and and we were able to make that happen. However, it was a struggle. It was hard. Mm -hmm. uh, I worked a lot. You know, some people go into real estate thinking they're gonna be working, you know, whenever they want to, and and just have fun and just look at houses all day. But there's a great deal of prep work that goes into it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think if I would have been able to shadow somebody for a mm -hmm. period of time, um, about a year, mm -hmm. you know, maybe maybe a little bit less, uh, that that would have been a huge huge benefit. So yeah. Did I, you I, go in full time in the beginning? The very I beginning? wasn't planning on it. 
Okay. I wasn't planning on it, but I uh, made that decision real quick. Yeah. Uh, I was still working as a medical lab tech at the time. I remember you saying that. And yeah. um, and so I left the the full time job that I had when I got my real estate license, and I took it's called a PRN position, which is uh, in health terms is, is as needed. Okay. Uh, working in a laboratory doing phlebotomy work, and um, so my idea of as needed was different than their idea of as needed. They kept trying to give me 40 hours, and I'm thinking, I'm, I just want to work maybe 10, 15 yeah, yeah, hours yeah. a week. Was so I'm trying to make this work, That's and it, it didn't no, work out. Work. And then I realized if I'm going to make this thing in real estate work out, I got to really put my, all my time and effort into it. Yeah, it's a good point. You know, it's, yeah, um, <laughs> it's funny sometimes when, and I get it, I, I'm a firm believer you can over especially too, like I said, it all comes down to your financial situation, Absolutely. but it takes a lot yes. of pressure off if you can have an overlap there while you're getting into real estate. Mm -hmm. But that being said, I say it's not like you're going to work real estate part-time and then work your other job full-time. You're going to work two jobs full-time. I mean, really, because mm -hmm. it's real estate, like you said, it's very tough, if not impossible to do truly part-time. I mean, it's going to take a lot of, a lot of effort, mm -hmm. but it can be done, right? If people, it can be done. Many do, many do it quite successfully. Yep, yeah, it's going to be a lot of work. So, how do you how do you get it all done? Um, like you said, you have a lot of properties that you manage mm -hmm. as well as a thriving real estate firm. Do you have any tools that you really like to use? Um, systems, processes, like how the do you... number one tool that every real estate professional needs is a good CRM. And it's got to be a CRM that's also a task manager. Mm -hmm. uh, that for me, that was a game changer. That's what that that's what put me um, uh, on the road to success. Because not only are you able to keep keep uh, uh, track of of who you who you have connected with and mm -hmm. be able to reach out to them on a regular basis <clears> and try to systemize it, automize as much as you possibly can. Right. Um, it tells you what you need to do in order in order to to finish up the day. Uh, every day when I sign into my CRM, you know, I got, uh, I don't know, what 20, to do. 30 to do's to knock out. I got yep. this many phone calls to knock out. I got this many letters to send out. I got this many emails to, to, to take care of. And, and all my appointments also connected mm -hmm. on there as well. Uh, my goal every single day is to get all those down to zero. Wow. And even if I don't feel like it, yeah. <laughs> you know, right. but because it's there, because it's in your face, because you can't avoid it. And because I'm signing into the system every single day, yeah. that's, that's, that's to me, that, that becomes the foundation of your business. That's also what enabled me to, well, um, I worked for two brokerages before I opened up uh, Legends mm -hmm. Realty. And so that enabled me to make the first move, and it also enabled me to to make the final move and, and open up our own company. Um, yeah. All that was already in place for us. Yeah, it's amazing how, again, when I'll talk with a salesperson, it's amazing to me how many people don't have any kind of a database. It's a mm -hmm. shame, really, right? Because I always say the difference between being in a sales role for a year and 15 years should be that after 15 years, you have a nice database of people that you've interacted with, hopefully done business with, but people that you've met, right? Mm -hmm. So when you don't have that, it's like you're almost at the beginning all, every month, every week. Um, it's a shame. So yeah, I implore any salesperson, any business, right? Not even just real estate mm -hmm. or finance, any business to have to have a semblance of if you a see there's so many great, like you said, CRMs out there, so many great tools. But um, yeah, I think it's one of the one of the foundational keys to success in business is having a way to keep in, like you said, keeps you on track of what to do, right? I'm assuming you have one in your business as well. Yeah, but I I use Constant Contact. It's nothing okay. fancy, but it yeah. works for me. Right. Um, it's like the old joke of you know, what's the best tool? It's the, the tool that you that use, use, kind of thing. Exactly. So um, <laughs> I also have a daily planner, which I any of of my uh, friends know. I have a a very fancy dollar store calendar that I use and literally I buy I like the one that the dollar dollar store sells <laughs> for 20 years it works for me and I go and I buy them actually I'm way behind because I don't have I, I don't have my big stash of uh, 2019 calendars I have to get in there before they all sell out I hope there's not a run on them now telling you guys about it but they're monthly just a night it just works for me I like the setup of it it's a monthly view with a daily breakdown I just like it I'm not a time blocker I'm a to-do list person so I have my whole strategy laid out for my month, my week, my day, and then of course my to-do list. But it works for me. And so there again, I when I coach folks, I'm like, hey, as long as you have some system, doesn't mm -hmm. have to be the system that I like or you like, but you gotta you have it. something. Yeah, you gotta have something. Um, so do you stay in touch with your 
database? We do. A I, lot. Yeah, absolutely, on multiple platforms. I'm just going to answer a quick question from, yeah, from Chad here. Oh, like, yeah, they're asking you which CRM know which you CRM. like. Um, not that I'm endorsing any single one, but the one. Are you get paid for it? <laughs> right. But the one that I personally use is Top Producer. I've yeah. been using it since, well, two it was probably within the first six months of 2000, I, uh, I bought my first. Uh, it was Top Producer 6i mm. at the time. It still came in the CDs that you had to upload yep. it into your computer. Okay, okay. And, um, and then from there, it's, it's just escalated. It went to 7i, it and now it's 8i. It's 100% yeah. online. Um, but, it but, works. but yeah, there are many, many, many good, good ones, ones out there. Yeah. You know, I, I tested a few, um, uh, several. You know, over the years, and and um, you keep going back. It's just to like them. what Toby says, you know, it's the best one is the one that you're going to use. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. By the way, um, yeah, keep uh, anybody who has questions. I hopefully post this made it to my site as well. So I'm like, hey, we have Dan here. Let's ask him some questions. I like to pick, <laughs> I like to pick your braid. Um, but to so, answer your yeah. previous question, as far as you know, how we keep in, in touch um, with our past customers, yeah, uh, email is easy. You know that, yeah. that you can automate and and and. Uh, like drip type of emails you exactly mean, or, yeah. right but um, we also send letters on a regular basis um, uh, I got a, a seven year after sale plan in which um, mm -hmm. every month I'm reaching out to my past customers and just kind of uh, you know wow. seeing how things are progressing for them giving them reminders on their anniversary dates to maybe go out yep. in front of their house and take a yep. picture picture of them with their kids nice. uh, or, or the, you know everybody in the household and, and over the years they can kind of see how how time has you know Progress, progress, but, yeah. you know, with them That's and, a great and, idea. and with the house. It's it's neat. I like that one. Um, uh, social media. That's that's yeah. a big one now. I yeah. you can't avoid it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It's a great tool. Absolutely. And it doesn't cost money. You know, I mean, you can obviously spend money on social media platforms, but you don't have to, right? So mm -hmm. I always say, use all the free tools that you can use first. Exhaust all of those before you go spending a bunch of money. Exactly. Um, how much is a lot of your business? From I'm guessing most of your business from referrals and people like it is. past customers and, and we're fortunate enough because of uh, of the setup that we have with both the property residential property yeah. management and the residential sales the two that tie in nicely together yeah uh, the reasons why Tina and I are able to work together because they're they're separate yeah. <laughs> and so even though we're in the same room at the yeah, same you time have your own lanes. yeah yeah you know we're we're focusing on different things but they they bounce off of each other so nice. so effortlessly I mean, you, you you figure you, you know you got uh, x number of properties you're gonna have x number of of uh, investors. And these are people who are always interested in either selling yeah. their existing homes, whether it's going to do, be doing a 1031 exchange or, or just mm -hmm. there's looking to let go of their, of their investments, uh, or they want to pick up more inventory. They want yeah. to buy more property. Right. Yeah. You know, and, and the relationship is there and we're able to, to assist them, able to help them out. Nice. Um, this is a, maybe a curveball question. What wastes your time? Do you have anything that you find you just talked about processes and having mm -hmm. systems in place. Is there anything you've found that is just kind of a time waster for you? Or maybe you haven't found the best process on how to handle it, you just get sucked into it? You might be able to help me out with this. I don't know, being a coach. <laughs> but yes, I absolutely <laughs> I do. Right? It's email. Yeah, email. Yeah. So much, so much email comes comes through. I mean, a big part of my day is just kind of going through and and, and deleting or, yeah. or putting into into uh, you know, specified folders mm -hmm. and, and trying to determine, prioritize, you know, which one do I answer now? Which one am I going to, um, do I have a, a couple of days to answer or a week or so to answer? And, and it's, it's just such a big part of my day. Yeah. And, and it's not necessarily uh, beneficial. It doesn't make, doesn't make me money necessarily in and of itself. Yeah. You know, I, I was going to say, if I did have a tip, it would be that is exactly what you're already doing for me. And there again, it's whatever works for you, right? Mm -hmm. For me, I exactly. I sort things over. I just move them over to folders and I have a A to-do list folder, a B and a C. So if it's mm -hmm. like by the end of the day, it goes into the A. If, if it needs to get done by the end of the day, by the end of the week, you know, and so forth, just to move them on. Because I think if you stop, so we're already ahead of most people that really get bogged down because if you stop and attend to every single thing, because you could spend, we all could spend 12 hours a day just getting back to emails if you spend all of that you know green time or you know valuable time during the day where you could be interacting with prospects and past customers and adding value to people's lives you just get yeah it's just a slippery slope right you just get down that rabbit hole and you never get out so yeah, yeah there again, right. having some kind of a process um so you've you've had teams and managed agents on your teams over the years mm -hmm. correct um 
So I know a very pressing question for a lot of business owners there again in a lot of industries about building teams and recruiting and finding the quality people that you want to be a reflection of you and your, your business and your business model. Um, how do you do that? Have you, how do you f decide, let's say when you're meeting someone or interviewing someone that they'd be a good fit for your team? Is there something you look for or a process you have or questions you, certain questions you ask? I have a list of questions that I usually go through. Um, and it, it, but for me, it might not be the textbook answer. Um, but I want I, I consider one of my own personal gifts uh, is gift of encouragement. Mm -hmm. Uh, and and with that, it's because I I'm able I feel like I'm able to determine a person's uh, weaknesses and strengths in a very short period of time uh, within within a couple of minutes of having yeah. a conversation with somebody, and uh, uh, it can be an asset in many ways. It can be a detriment also. You mm -hmm. know, it becomes a detriment when I'm having an argument with somebody. I know just how to kind of you know hit them below the belt, and yeah. been, I'm always working on that trying to make myself better from not doing that kind of thing. <laughs> Uh, but the other aspect of it is, is yeah, knowing their strengths and weaknesses, mm -hmm. and and kind of uh, figuring out uh, you know what kind of a person that they are. Um, I feel like I can I can sort of get a feel for somebody rather quickly, and and then so from there it's just about going with my gut again. Yeah. The textbook answer. No. Or just them. profiles you can use and, and that kind of thing. Yeah. And yeah. That's what a lot of people train and teach, and I've learned those systems. Yeah. But, exactly. Um, uh, I haven't pulled in from that. No, I'm with, you. <laughs> I'm with you. I think that's the that's like the million dollar question, right? Is if you could identify perfectly every time, and anyone that's in a hiring position like Dan and I have been for many years. Once in a while, you still get bamboozled. It still happens, right? You just still have that person that mm -hmm. you think had all the potential in the world. Maybe the potential all the potential but they didn't you know take action they didn't do the steps right they didn't follow through um, Untapped potential is such a waste it, it really so is. many people have it most everybody I, I, right. I believe it's just a matter of whether or not you're going to to uh, take advantage of it use it you know yeah it, yeah it's very true um so i'm in in all business things mm -hmm. don't always go as you would hope or as you had planned like we like you mentioned with the phone systems and things things come up you have a great disposition i've i've always i've never i've personally interacted with you like i said for many years and i've never seen dan in a bad mood he's always just a <laughs> i'm sure you have none those days we all do yeah. but you do a great job of just being positive and having a great smile um how do you handle i know it's a personal question so i don't know how if you would even want to answer it but how do you handle disappointment you know and maybe things don't go your way or you're having a you know just disappointment in general that's a that's a good question. It's a, it's a hard question because uh, I have the way that I want to handle it, you mm. know, and just letting it kind of roll off your shoulders and and uh, you know letting it go and focusing on whether it's a better way mm. of trying to accomplish whatever it is that, that didn't go right, or deciding okay, is 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 there anything to learn from this and and should I just let it go or should I move on to something completely new, and. Um, I guess for me, for me, it's always just been a matter of of seeing what I can learn from it, and determining what the best course of action is going to be. Uh, it's always, I guess, it always starts with taking a pause, though. Um, yeah. Different from you, I'm an introvert, mm -hmm. um, and so as as anybody that knows the differences between introverts and extroverts, uh, introverts we have a, an expendable amount of energy that we're able to give off on a daily basis, mm -hmm. and um, so when you come across something like that you kind of have to take a pause mm -hmm. and and reflect on it and 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 then come up with a course of action to to know you know what your next direction is going to be hmm. uh whereas i think somebody like we who's an extra yeah. um it's you almost, almost kind of thrive on it right right <laughs> yeah i'd say and i it's interesting yeah i never really thought about it that way it's right your own paradigm we only know how we um think mm -hmm. you can try to empathize and hopefully if you know, you care about people, you want to put yourself in other people's shoes, but you're right. You can only know what you live, right? Your experience to a degree. So I got to know that yeah. before we go yeah. on, how do you handle disappointments then? Yeah, that's a good question. I would caveat what I'm about to say with the value in both of us answering this is everyone has disappointment. Mm -hmm. Everyone has days, right? Where you're not feeling that great or things didn't go your way. And so I don't think anyone is immune to that. Um, extrovert or not, and so certainly I get disappointed. Uh, how do I handle it? I like to 
listen to something. I like to put something positive into my brain. So whether it's listening to a, a TED talk or a YouTube yeah. video or calling someone, a friend, a confidant like yourself, call, you know, really just get out of my own head a little bit and start listening to other people with some positive things some listening to their stories. That helps me a lot. So reading, I, I'm like an avid reader. So books but I also like to like I said listen to listen to positive things I have to reset that uh, tone because as outgoing and as positive as I probably come across hopefully I try to keep pretty positive um, those who know me good <laughs> it's working <laughs> nice. uh, those who know me best would, would say would tell you if they were sitting here that I can get pretty down on myself when things don't go my way I can get pretty uh, you know I can be pretty hard on myself and I think like I said if we're to be honest when we're you know home and no one else is around right i think we all have those times but Definitely. i have to reset the uh you know re uh, reset the the barometer of um yeah of attitude once in a while so yeah. that's what i do i like to hear someone else and being grateful um i think it might have been tony robbins who said something about you know disappointment or being kind of down the anecdote is just being grateful and realizing like how many good things that we all have going for us, right? Hmm. Our worst day, no matter how much disappointment we had in a day, that deal that didn't close, that blew up at the closing table, or the account that the builder didn't get you thought you were going to land, whatever it is, um, gosh, it's nothing in the scheme of things, right? Of real serious, um, serious things with your loved ones or health problems. Amen. I mean, yes. gosh, we you know, what we do is a blessing to be able to help people <laughs> to buy homes and rent homes and I mean, it's, or improve their businesses. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and it's pretty good stuff. Lives, right? Yeah, it's pretty good stuff. So, I assume there's, there's yeah. kind of a take on, I just popped in my head, yeah. you know, uh, you're improving somebody's businesses. It's not just a matter of what's going to improve their bottom line. You're, you're probably right. working on their, on their personal self. Absolutely. Yeah. So the question a lot of times that I'll get from folks is, so are you a, uh, like a life coach, you know, or career coach, or what kind of coach are you? And I just like to call myself a success coach, or just coach, um, because <laughs> what you said, it really, what do I call myself on my card? Nothing. Okay, <laughs> Toby. Um, but says, I think- Says you're president. Says president of the company. That's really, <laughs> really tells you a lot. Um, I need to work on that. But I think that coaching, it, to your point, we're not islands, right? Our business life isn't like, you're Dan one way in business and then you go home and you're another Dan, you know, we're all, you know, people, we're all human beings, our lives all intersect and intertwine. And so, um, so when I'm helping someone to build a sales strategy or to help with their business goals, certainly that's where I'm, that's where I can add the most value because I've had a measure of success in that in my, in my own life. So I like to share what I know about the business and the sales world. That said, you're exactly right. It all intertwines. So if someone's having really, tough problems in their marriage, for instance, that's going to roll over into their business life because mm -hmm. that's just something that's going to be, you know, on their mind. Right. So, um, so yeah, so I really, like I said, I, I help people with all facets of their life. It goes back to their outlook. And so that's my coaching style is personal development, not just sales development, not just prospecting and brand building and how to overcome objections and what script you're, you know, best to use. Mm -hmm. I know we do all, we talk about all of those those little tactics, right? They're right. very important. But on a bigger picture, it's working on the, your personality, your thought process, your communication skills, how you handle when you have a bad day, all the, how you best learn and how to utilize that, how to leverage your strengths. The talk that I was telling you about that I did yesterday was the topic was four traits of successful salespeople. And the funny thing is, I'll admit to you guys here, is that I actually had to add the word salespeople in there because it was just originally it was just four successful or four traits of successful people, yep. right? Because mm -hmm. whether you're a salesperson or not, it didn't really matter. You're if you're successful just in the bigger picture, right? Mm -hmm. Successful in life. You have people around you that love you. You have a you know a happy disposition. You have a good life. Um, so yeah, that's a long way to say that it all intertwines and that I hopefully when I help someone, if I'm in their in their corner, if they've hired me to help them or their business, hopefully I help in a lot of different ways, right? So they'll walk away saying, wow, that was a big improvement. And it's skills when we when we again when we're I'm coaching someone and we're building out their strategy, whether we're working together for a month or for six months or for a year, because I have different time periods that I can with someone. Mm -hmm. Like I said, at the end of that time, those are skills 
that they're going to take with them forever. So it's it's really it's really cool. It's really powerful stuff, and it's just a it's a it's a it's a great thing to to watch when someone really you know, things start changing for them in a positive way. It's really great. That must be. I bet it is. Yeah, it's awesome. I want to say a quick hello out to Cindy Myers. Thanks for joining. Vance Scott, thanks for, thanks for coming on board. Jackie Berkson, she was here about uh, three weeks ago. Thanks for coming on board. Uh, Jennifer Leah, uh, Christina Nelson's on board now, too. Give us the thumbs up. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and I was, you know, as you guys are watching, and if you don't mind um, sharing Dan's, uh, you know, his his show that he has here, there's so much um, power and value in us helping each other. And I was complimenting him before we went live on the fact that he had this idea to do this show. He's watched there's a few of people that we know in common. I, Ted Bogart's doing a great show. And yes, I'm, yes. I know there's there's others as well. Did you mention someone else? No, Kevin leaving Woodrow, out. Yes. Ah, Kevin, yep. I think we saw him on here. So Kevin's doing a show, which is mm -hmm. awesome. Guys, there's so much business to go around and there's so much goodwill and good karma really that comes from helping each other mm -hmm. that I encourage everyone that um, to help support Dan. And I know Dan will in turn support you guys with your uh, efforts and whatever, you know, things that you guys have going on. So it's, it's social media is so great because it affords everyone very easily the opportunity to, to help our friends. Um, and so, like I said, I just think it's really great that you're doing these kind of things. And I would also, let me put my coaching hat on for a second. I would Please. say that if any of you guys are thinking about doing, a, whether it's a show or you're thinking about doing videos for your business or you're thinking about doing a mastermind group or you're thinking about starting a broker open event where in your, you know, air in your farm area, you're going to get together and every Tuesday do an awesome caravan broker open, whatever it is, just do it. Like do it because you know what? You have friends and acquaintances and maybe people you don't even know now, but that you'll meet in that journey. You're going to have people support you. Um, if you support others, it's there again. It's all a big, you know, karmic thing that it goes back. Around. So I think it's great that you're watching and, and supporting Dan with his show. And um, I'll do everything I can to keep supporting it because I think it's great. So. Isn't she great? I mean, she, not only is she dynamic, but she's intelligent. She, 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 she's got a great, great personality, great heart. You know, kudos. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Well, hopefully, like I said, I think it's good stuff to be able to, um, well, I wanted to thank you for letting me ask you some questions because I wanted to, to help. There's so many business owners that are out there, they're again, not just in real estate, that really, this is, it's very valuable, right, to hear someone who's actually started their own business. It's no, no small feat made me think of a question that I wanted to ask you. Mm -hmm. Sorry, this might be going at a, at a pace a little bit. In real yeah. estate specifically, okay. what do you think, because we have a lot of folks that are not in the real estate, maybe industry that are going to watch this. What do you think is a, is a main or a couple misconceptions that the average person that's not in real estate would have about real estate agents? the industry what are some misconceptions hmm. they might have well I, I think i touched on it a little bit or one of the earlier questions is, is people <clears> think <throat> that we just kind of yeah. walk around and show houses all through people's homes and you know critique it yeah. <laughs> you know, and, like and, on hgtv sometimes <laughs> right. There, right oh please don't watch this well, no i'm not gonna say that <laughs> <laughs> Picture of what well, real estate real estate professionals do on a daily basis. Right? Yeah. There might be moments, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. but uh, there's so much more to it. Uh, there's a, so much education. There's so much professionalism that goes into it. Um, uh, a realtor brings so much to to the transaction, to the mm -hmm. experience. Not only do they make the the experience better, uh, but typically more profitable. Mm -hmm. um, they they definitely earn earn their their commission, their their keep if they mm -hmm. if they do. A for you, um, you're gonna want somebody that, that's going to communicate mm -hmm. um, well. Uh, not just the good stuff. They're going to tell you tell you everything that's going right with with the marketing and the selling of the property. Tell you everything that's going wrong. Um, you know, tell you any potential pitfalls. Uh, be able to uh, handle those, prepare for those before they mm -hmm. become an issue. Um, but but yeah, in 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 general, you know, I, I guess people don't think that. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Realtors put a lot of time and effort into into their work, and but the the fact of the matter is, I mean, shoot, I'm working 50, 60 uh, hour weeks or more. No, <laughs> right. Yeah, it's putting in a lot of time. Yeah, it doesn't yes. have to as much as I like, right? Absolutely. Yeah, it takes a lot. You mentioned communication. Mm -hmm. What do you find, whether from your experience with people on your team or you're on the other side of a transaction, 
you know, and I'm sure sometimes the communication, I'm going to guess, is not always stellar. What do you see people that other agents don't do well or, you know, do they, what's, what are they missing in that whole communication mix? Just making, making you aware. I, I think it comes down to fear. Mm. You know, uh, mm -hmm. a potential problem comes up or a potential problem uh, could come up and uh, they don't want to tell anybody about it. They're yes. almost hoping it just goes away. Yeah, and we got a couple so of uh, loan officers uh, on board already, and, and uh, I'm sure more. We'll see it later on. Uh, that's one of the the first conversations that I have. That, that they're always coming up to me and saying, you know, what are you looking for in a, in a loan officer? Mm -hmm. And first and foremost, it's always communication. Uh, if you're if you will tell me potentially what might be happening on a file before it becomes a problem, chances are working together, mm -hmm. we, can, we can get it corrected before it becomes a big deal. Um, it's going to sound, sound like a cliche, but communication. Just just tell us what, what's happening, what's going on. Um, don't wait until closing day and suddenly we need a, a two week extension because <laughs> you yeah, know, we, uh, you know this this issue come up that nobody was aware of or that you were aware of a week ago. And if and you didn't just, just, told, or just told me about it, we we, we could have prepared everybody and all would be be good. Um, but yeah, that's we talked about this yesterday at at um, the NAMBA Expo that we had, which we had a, a panel of real estate agents, mm -hmm. and we talked about you know what they look for in partners, be it lenders or other partners. Right. And yeah, communication was definitely, a, it's such a, it was at the top you know, of, the, of the list, right, of importance. And it's one of those things that it's not a fancy marketing tool. It, you're not asking for $500 to sponsor an open house. You're just saying, please communicate with me and right. let me know what's going on. It's, and you know, as loan officers, they know what's going on. So just share, you know, share the news. Um, I joked yesterday with the quote that I used for, I heard years ago, and then I like to repeat it because it's so funny is, you know, bad news isn't like fine wine. Bad news doesn't get better with time. No, so you just no. want to get it out of, you want to get it out of the way, right? As quick as, <laughs> quick as possible. Um, and even being honest when they don't have an answer coming from finance for 20 years and you know i'm friends with dan so we always had great communication uh style and we were always honest with each other if we had files and process but hey at the end of the day even if you're a loan officer tell me if you agree with this even if even if say the underwriter in my office didn't get back to me and i truly did not get the answer that i was expecting to get it's mm -hmm. friday at five i thought i was going to have an answer this week didn't wouldn't you prefer me to call you Rather than not call you, call you and say, "Hey Dan, the underwriter didn't get back to me. I know it's bummer. I really wanted to know too, but they just they left. They didn't get back to me. I just didn't want you to think I was ignoring you through the weekend. You know, going into the weekend, I'll have to get back to you on Monday." I tell you why that's important because I don't have a relationship with the underwriter. Yeah. Uh, you have the relationship with the underwriter, so um, that tells me to, that that simple communication tells me that you are still paying attention to the file. Yes. You know, yeah. and you know, we're not sit sitting and wondering or making plans, making plans for our next step based on our decision. Um, that's the, to me that even if it's if you got nothing to report, just letting me know uh, what's going on. Uh, let me know what you know right now in the process can can um, makes it better for me so that I can communicate with my customer yes. more appropriately. Yeah. And it just makes the, the transaction go so much smoother. But the thing is, is that we all want the same thing. We all want the transaction to take place. Right. You we're know, we want, we want a happy yeah. seller, we want a happy buyer, we want everybody involved to be happy. And, but the, there's only one way to make that happen is if we all work together yeah. Uh, to, to- Yeah, we're all on the same team, place. I like to say. Exactly, right. Yeah, we judge others based on their actions and we judge ourselves based on our intentions mm -hmm. so your actions when someone doesn't take action or does and it's not a good action that's all we can judge you by because you know we're not in your brain right so um yeah you have and to take action that's important Anthony garcia says come on board with a, with make a comment them, yeah make, make that, that call. call no f false expectations yeah Outstanding. He, he spoke about that yesterday. <laughs> it's very true yeah and he knows the deal he's been in the loan business a long time anthony yes and he does a great job at that of yeah getting out ahead of things right just communicating good or bad news letting people know what's going on for sure um so i would not be in our in our last 10 minutes or so i would not be any kind of a coach if i did not take this opportunity to ask you, how do you, first two-part two question, how do you learn? Is it, do you like to, you know, go to classes or read books or watch YouTube videos? How do you best learn? And then as part, um, second part to that, are there any particular things that you really like, be it books or, I don't know, movies or seminars?
you would advise, you know, or suggest uh, for people to to watch or read? Okay, um, I, I do a lot of reading, and mm -hmm. I listen to a lot of audio books as as well. Yeah. And there's a gentleman I give him the credit for. His name is Darren Hunter. He's a he's a uh, uh, property management uh, um, teacher, and yeah. uh, coach mm -hmm. out of uh, Australia, and. Uh, Comment. He goes, you Americans. <laughs> he says, you guys, you guys got the most brilliant minds in your country. People that are making millions and billions of dollars, and then they turn around and they put all their ideas on paper, hmm. and they and they're willing to to give you this wealth of information for like ten bucks. Yeah. And all you gotta do is take it and read it, and Amazing, and yeah. and you don't. <laughs> yeah. You know, the, the simple fact of the matter is most people don't pick up a book after they graduate from high school. I mean, that's just that's a shame. Yeah. And um and that was that that was a, a big part of what, what kind of what turned me on to audiobooks. You know, because mm -hmm. um um you know we're always in the car, we're always heading yeah. somewhere. That's a lot of time that uh, could be wasted. Yes. You know, you listen to the same top ten, top twenty uh, songs over and over again. Yeah. Uh, or you can you can put it in an audiobook, and it's easier now than ever before. So. That's right. And um, and and learn something. And um, do you watch pod or listen to podcasts at all? I do not so much. I, I on the podcast, I, I tend to listen to more political stuff. Okay, yeah. Um, but the, for for leadership, for for uh, business, it tends to be more audio books. Got it. And uh, just recently started getting into TED Talks. Got it. That's yeah, TED Talks well. is good stuff. Shout yeah. out if you guys don't watch TED Talks. T E D. Um, I don't even know what that acronym stands for. Maybe one of you guys knows. It's some. I've heard it, but yeah, I have too, but I can't. remember. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, a lot of great little videos and and what's nice about TED Talks or YouTube videos is you don't always have to watch them. A lot of times the audio, so like you said, if you're driving, mm -hmm. you can even put something on and typically you can just listen. You don't have to actually watch it the whole time. Um, do you have any books off the top of your head that you really um, like, the audio books that you think are good? Uh, this is a hard. I had to actually write this down in case this came up because I uh, don't. Rem I'm bad about remembering that who wrote books. Well, I just finished one that was outstanding, and, and now the name is, is escaping me. It's Dale Carnegie, and of course, you know, his, oh, his, his, his oh. famous one, How to Make Friends and Influence People. That, yeah, that's, that's, that's a great that, one. That's awesome, but he, he has another one. And oh, I wish I could remember. I like, know <laughs> it'll come. It'll come to you. Maybe. Um, have you ever read any of Jeb Blunt's books? Fanatical prospecting. People buy you. It's great. They're great. He's okay. written several other books as well. Um, but you know, he's a current author and speaker and um, coach. Great, great. I give his books away a lot. Like you said, it's when it's a book, it's someone's life of knowledge, right, yes. or a career of knowledge. And like you said, they're sharing everything that they know. They're trying, trying their best to condense it down into a book where they can give it to you talk about going to lunch with someone it's better than that because you can actually right you know go back and make notes and mm -hmm. and go back to it as in re-reference that that book or that chapter that you really like so to me you know gosh if there was a top 10 which i do actually i have a seminar on the top 10 things that well let's um, I think well, there's, a lot. there's a lot, but some of the other, there's a lot. And I actually, funny, um, in addition to the top 10 things that I think people uh, should do to improve their, their business, as part of that, I'm actually going to start doing a seminar on just the books because I think there is such, such a value in great books, business books or personal development books, type books, right, in books that I've been asked by so many people to share my list of, of I'm an avid reader. I read at least two books a week. And, and I've done that for a long time, so it sounds like wow, a lot, but I can, yeah. I can read very quickly um, and have a great library, and I, I cherish my library. But long story short, people have asked me so many times, what's my list of favorite books? So I'm actually going to uh, start doing a seminar. So if there's anyone out there that's interested in something like that, um, and I have many other topics as well that I'd be happy to share if anyone's interested, but where I can come to your sales organization and share. And this book report, if you will be a top 10 list, and then I'll give, you know, a few minute uh, cliff note version of the book to see if it might interest someone in the audience. And then hopefully it'll uh, give them the motivation to go out and buy the book. Like you said, you can listen to it on, on audio, right? Or buy a used book. You don't have to get a new book. I mean, you can get a used book for a few bucks. Um, we got yeah, an answer, I we got an answer to our earlier question oh, yeah. from what my is Reese it? Ah. Technology, Entertainment, and Design. We Kay. should have figured that Reese would know that. <laughs> Reese is smart. Reese, Reese is, is a, a smart man. guy. <laughs> um, 
And then John Maxwell, I think there's some other oh, John uh, great incredible. winner. Lots yeah, winner. awesome. I uh, had the pleasure a few years ago of going Meeting to get from certified. The middle, I think is my favorite one from Yep, he's, he's got, yep. And 360 Leader is yes. a great one. Mm -hmm. Five Levels of Leadership is another great one. If you're a leader, specifically if you are a leader, I mean, his books really resonate with anyone. They're, again, about developing yourself. Mm -hmm. But as a leader, to me, if you're a leader and you don't read some of the John Maxwell books, you're really doing yourself a disservice. And I'm not just saying that because I'm a John Maxwell certified coach and speaker. Oh, yeah. I think, I yeah, okay. years ago I went. And now it's um, a lot more people are becoming sure. John Maxwell certified. He does the certifications. Well, at least he used to. I right think he Florida, still right? does right here in Orlando. Yeah. Great program. Uh, so I can teach all of his what that does once you get certified is it allows you to go out and in turn give certifications for different books of his. So I could go to an organization and uh, teach their sales leaders over a set amount of time and then I can issue them a certificate that they can hang on their wall and say that they attended, um, for instance, everyone communicates, few connect, right? You can graduate from my class of that John Maxwell material, but he is phenomenal. So if you're a leader and you have not read some of the John Maxwell books, um, that would be, I'd put that on your to-do list through the holidays when maybe you have a little time, a day off here and there, listen to some of his material. He also has his Maxwell Minutes. Yes, so, thank you. That's so I'm, great. I'm envisioning a, a Time with Toby uh, platform coming Time up. with Toby. <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny. It would be good. Well, that's all, that way they wouldn't have to take such a long period of time. Just a quick, what's enough? Is it enough? Um, I wrote, oh, and then the last thing I wanted to share about books is, I would I would be I would not be doing my duty if I did not mention Gary Vaynerchuk because I really like Gary V and he's got only for his social media material and content but I just he's got some great points on just business right he knows he, how to make a point doesn't he, he does. I mean, he's a little, you know, he's a little, uh, he does curse I always caveat when I'm doing a seminar and I mention because he does he right. curses a lot um, but his books crushing it um, the thank you, thank one, you, yeah. economy is probably my favorite. I'm Never really big one. on. Oh, it's great. It's really big on leading with kindness in my life personally. It's what helped me to have the success that I've had. And then I believe, in turn, like I said, when I've watched people, the common denominators, like I said, of what's caused some people to be those super achievers, right? Those super high uh, producers, salespeople. Kindness is always. A common denominator just being kind by the true sense of the definition I always say man like kindness is one of those things it's not being nice it's being kind like it's much deeper than that it's much more guttural it's it's helping someone it's making the right decision for someone else even if it's um, you know above to help them even if it's uh, counterproductive for yourself it's really, like I said, treating the golden rule, right? Treating right. others as you wish you as you'd like to be treated. And I think people give lip service to that a lot, but um, if and we're none of us perfect, certainly I'm not. But I think the more you can strive for that, there again in your business and in your personal life, but certainly in business, if you can always, when when you have a choice to make, if you can always stand back and say what would be the the kind way to respond to this. That'll always serve you well. Hmm. I love it. In my opinion. So. That's outstanding. It solves a lot of other ills <laughs> too. Like I, I always joke if someone's like, well, I'm not good at this. I'm disorganized, kind of messy. I don't ever start projects that I don't finish. And I can't, and my communication's not the greatest and all these things. I'm always disheveled. I'm late to meetings, all these things. I'm like, so obviously we can, as we're working together, I'll help you with those things as a coach, right? To help you chip away at all those different categories. But I say kindness cures a lot of ills. So that's like the paint I like to say that can you can brush over and like cover up a lot of things on your wall. If you're kind at the end of the day, because think about it in your own life, we all know people. Are you one of these people that are very kind? You're a kind-natured person. It's obvious in one conversation with you that you care about people and that you have other people's best interests oh, at heart. Mutual for sure. And but that. So like anything, even if you didn't have a, you know what I mean? Like even if you weren't strong in all those other categories, you are. But even if you weren't, um, the fact that you're kind makes people want to do business with you. You know, it's just, uh, that's how we all are hard hardwired, by the way. So so it matters uh, immensely. So Outstanding. Well, let's learn one more thing about Toby before we, we uh, cut okay. this short. And, and um, 
I think about the only thing we didn't cover is what what the movies do. Like, what what what's your favorite? Oh movie? gosh, I mean, <laughs> this is funny. So this is um, yeah, this is a tough question for me because I only watch. I don't want to say I've only ever watched, but I've probably watched five movies like that aren't documentaries. Really. I'm a huge documentary wow. buff, yeah. and I don't watch them often, but when I do watch a movie, if it's not a documentary, um, like I said, I've probably gone to the movie theater like three times in my life. Amazing. Isn't that wow. funny? Yeah. yeah. I just don't watch. I mean, it's nothing I'm against them. I just don't. It's just one of those things. Yeah. Um, but I love doc. I like to learn something, so I'm one of those people that once I, if I hear about a topic that I don't know about, like I'm going to spend the next, I'm a little OCD, I'll spend the next two weeks <laughs> what, learning, watching, reading every book. Like I have to learn. So I know a lot about a lot of things, like just obscure things. Like I could tell you a lot about anything from like snails, you know, to armadillos to, you know, a country that you've never heard of. Yeah, I'm a wealth of knowledge. So also now really we know when we, when we come across Toby on about that, we don't ask her about any, any movies. Don't ask me about that. <laughs> That blockbuster that just came out through the holidays. Like, I don't know. I'm sure it's great. Yeah, I'm not smart. Yeah, I'm sure it's awesome. Do you have a really great movie that you like? Um, Favorite movie? First one that comes to mind is going to be Goodwill Hunting. Yeah, I've heard that's a great one. I haven't watched it. <laughs> I haven't watched it. Watch it. Maybe I'll watch it since you said it. I'll watch it through the Thanksgiving break. It's How's actually that? a really good life lesson. Goodwill Hunting. I have heard that. Okay, Goodwill Hunting. I will. Uh, I'll have to watch that at Dan's endorsement. That's awesome. That's great. Well, then on, I think on that note, how about we? <laughs> on the movie note, good. I, I get. I, 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 Speaking for me, I mean, I, I had a lot of fun. I, you know, I really appreciate you coming oh, thank in. Thank you for and, the uh, opportunity. Giving us all this information Gosh. and wealth of knowledge. Um, and anybody that's uh, interested in um, uh, looking to improve their their business, you know, improve their their sales skills, improve their life, you know, definitely reach out to Toby with uh, Life is a Ladder Coaching. Um, like she said earlier, we've known each other for, for quite some time. I know that she will do a phenomenal job uh, in, in, in improving your life, helping you improve your life. That's great. Well, uh, thank you. Thank you. Much. Thank you for the opportunity, and uh, yeah, look forward to talking to you guys soon. So thanks a lot. Take All care. Right. Thanks, Dan. Take care, everybody. Thanks for coming on board. Thanks. And at my age. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're stuck.